A, a very warm Lianza welcome. Um, we're so delighted that um, Trevor Himiona is um, who is the principal advisor at Archives New Zealand, um, has so kindly um, offered to run this webinar today, What is Y262? Um, it's, it's a really important um, piece of legislation and um, we're really looking forward to hearing more about it and why it's so important. And I think that we're all gonna leave this workshop um, with a better understanding about the issues um, and I, hopefully you've all watched the documentary link that we sent you um, with the reminder email. I'm just letting in some stragglers. Um, today we're going to be using breakout rooms. Um, so I don't, if you haven't used breakout rooms before, you get sent a, an invitation um, to click on a link and then you get put into a, um, into a room with some other people. There's going to be some fun interactive stuff happening today. Um, and if you don't mind um, muting yourself while um, Trevor's speaking, then we won't get any distracting background noises. Um, that's it for me. I'm just going to hand over to, to Trevor. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, kia ora. Uh, and uh, thank you, Helen. Kia uh, nui. Kia kurahi. Tēnā tātā katoa. E harama yana ki tēnau wānanga e pāna ki to Pai Tawhiti Y262. Um, so thank you everybody and welcome to this webinar, this wānanga in relation to Y262 to Pai Tawhiti. So you probably have heard uh, a number of developments recently and today's uh, wānanga is designed to uh, provide you uh, with uh, an insight, uh, particularly from a Te Māori perspective uh, regarding the legacy of Y262 as part of a wider program uh, of three workshops uh, that uh, I'm delivering to the Department of, of Internal Affairs. Um, to Arua, uh, ko wai aho, uh, ko manga tautari te maunga, ko wai kato wai ho, uh, te awa, uh, ko tainui te waka, uh, ko Ngati te korehe, uh, Ngati Raukawa, wai kato tainui ngā iwi, uh, ko Trevor Himona tōku ingoa, uh, ko au te tahi o ngā ringa wera, uh, ki te rua mahara o te kāwanatanga. Uh, so kia ora everybody, uh, so uh, I'm Trevor Himona, uh, Principal Advisor uh, to Archives New Zealand, and I provide the deep strategic advice uh, to the Chief Archivist and the branch uh, in regards to strengthening our Māori Crown relationship. Uh, nā reira, te nā koutou. Uh, tēnā koutou, uh, tēnā tātou katoa. So um, the way that I deliver this workshop uh, has always been bilingual. So I've delivered this in te reo uh, and English uh, because I, I think that's a, a really great and, and rich way uh, to talk about this topic. Hoi uh, anō kua pāhuri ake nei te wiki o te reo Māori. So even though we've just had um, Māori Language Week, uh, this is also an, an opportunity to kia hora hora uh, te reo Māori. So normalising te reo, that's the goal. Uh, and it'll be very easy um, for you to follow. And uh, of course, I'll always uh, give a translation. So um, Helen, uh, without any further ado, let's um, kick off with uh, the first slide. Great. So. Uh, I tēnei rangi, uh, ko te tūmana ko kia whakamāra mā ngā hōhunutanga e pāna to Y262. So today we're, uh, we'll be taking uh, uh, a snapshot and insight uh, into the legacy of Y262. Um, who can tell me um, what Y262 uh, actually is? And, and today that's, that's what we'll, we'll be going through. So uh, as context, uh, Y262 is a registration process to lodge claims uh, with the Waitangi Tribunal. And so when those Komato and Kuya uh, submitted the claim in the early 1990s, they were given the number 262, because that was the order of the claim uh, that they presented. But the claim itself uh, dealt with, uh, firstly, an all-government approach 
inquiry uh, into uh, a grievance that Māori had raised. This was the very first time uh, that the tribunal had uh, inquired into an all-government uh, grievance uh, in relation to, to Y262. And, and I think for a lot of people, when they hear that, um, it's, it's not really clear what the intention of that claim is about. And so today's workshop is to dive a bit deeper into um, those kuia and those kaumātua who I describe as champions uh, for Te Ao Māori when they brought this um, in front of the tribunal in the early 1990s. Um, it was also uh, the first inquiry by the tribunal um, to consider the, what the treaty settlement uh, and the treaty relationship should look like uh, in regards to the historical claims that have been settled uh, by the Crown uh, and, and today uh, in these modern times. And then <clears throat> we also know uh, Y262 as Ko Tēnei, and that's the seminal report uh, that the tribunal uh, have put together. Now, normally when I do a face-to-face -face, um, presentation of this, I will ask, you know, what's the other name that we know, Y262? And, um, and, and so I facilitate uh, that through, through the audience. Uh, but today, just because we've got the Zoom, um, we can um, sort of go through that uh, by way of chat. So if you think you know the answer, what's another name? Um, for Y262, uh, please chuck it into the, into the chat um, and then we may have some prizes uh, that will go out uh, to you today. I don't see any chat at the moment. Oh, yes, we do. Perfect. Um, o tēnā koe, uh, Tania. Yes, Nina. Thank you. Yeah, it's also known as the Fora and Fauna claim uh, within Te Ao Māori. So in the late 80s and early 90s, there was evidence, there were cases where uh, Māori mātauranga Māori was being exploited or being sold, um, whether that was by Crown agencies. Um, a good example was um, in the late 80s, early 90s, um, the, the Crown Institute, DCSIR, uh, was going through a process of selling the strain of um, Kumara uh, to Japan. And Māori intervened on that. They were um, upset that their interests, their rights, in regards to the knowledge uh, that was built up in regards to Kumara was being sold uh, overseas. But there were a whole range of other issues that Māori were concerned about in regards to flora, and fauna. So we were also seeing indigenous tuna and other species uh, being exploited at the same time. So in this next slide, Yahiahatangako of the Kremi Y262. So what is uh, Y262 about? So uh, Helen, if you could click on the button, we'll see uh, those three main points that, that I've just outlined. So uh, for Te Ropu Whakamana, and that's the Māori name of the Waitangi Tribunal, it was their first overall all-of-government inquiry, uh, examining policy areas across 20 government agencies. Uh, the next uh, bullet point, thanks, Helen. It was the first inquiry that looked directly um, at the treaty relationship, the treaty partnership, and what that should look like um, in relation to the historical grievances. And I'm assuming everyone knows what historical grievances are. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, the last bullet point is the seminal name of the tribunal's report, Kaotero Tene, a report into the claims concerning New Zealand law and policy affecting Maori culture and identity. That is the, the title of the Y262 report um, produced by. Uh, the tribunal. Kaotero Tene is the short version, but it's a report into the New Zealand laws and policy uh, that affected uh, Māori culture and identity. So, such an important report. 
And so today, in 2020, the Crown is looking at how can we start responding uh, to this report, uh, and that will build a pathway forward for Māori to continue to contribute to the economic development uh, of this country. Okay, can we have the next slide? Uh, thank you, um, Helen. So what's really important today is to understand that um, Y262, as the claim, has had a journey. Um, no doubt it goes right back to 6th of February 1840, but over time, uh, Māori have uh, raised concerns about protecting their interests and rights to the environment, to the flora and fauna um, that we are kaitiaki over, that Māori are kaitiaki. So that was um, in 1991, the original claim was lodged. So it's now 2020. So there's an expectation amongst Māori that there is um, a timely response uh, by the Crown. And then in 1997, uh, the tribunal started hearings uh, into the claim, and that went on for 10 years. And those hearings were completed in 2007. And then for the next uh, four years, the tribunal drafted up the Koeltiro Tene uh, report. So what's important for us to realize is that for us as people who work in this sector, um, who look after Mataranga Māori, it's really important for us to, to have an understanding of what that expectation uh, is amongst Māori in regards to the care, management, and preservation of their tanga. And so the Y26 claim certainly has, has a whakawhara. Okay, the next slide, please, Helen. All right, so this is our first exercise. Uh, so who were the original claimants? Uh, which iwi uh, did they affiliate to? So um, if we could break up into our uh, breakout rooms and for the next couple of minutes, um, in your groups, um, see if you can identify as many of the original claimants as possible, and then which iwi did they represent? <laughs> okay, ora uh, Hui ano kahoki mai ki tene uh, wahanga. So we're coming back to uh, the big group, and in your breakout rooms, um, you would have put together some names and some answers to uh, these questions. Um, so in your breakout groups, um, we had uh, some spokesperson uh, identified for the group I was with. So, uh, Carolee, I'm just wondering if you could um, give your answers on behalf of our group. Yep, so the, um, we didn't remember all of the iwi, but we um, came up with five different iwi that were involved. Um, Napui, Ngāti Kahangunu, Ngāti Wai, Ngāti Kuri, and Te Rārawa. Um, we remembered that ha Hana Murray was one of the original claimants. Um, and then we had a discussion about um, that when um, some of the original claimants passed on, there were others that also came in. Um, and yeah, and then um, we didn't get onto the different, um, the second question, the different things that were in that claim. Yeah, I oh, know we did. Yeah, so uh, naming the original claimants, and then the other question was, what were their iwi affiliations? Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, cool. Cool. Thank you. So um, I'm not too sure if we designated spokespeople for the groups uh, as well, and um, so we've had some answers in regards to the iwi. Pretty much four of the six. Uh, just in your um, chat, if you could fire through some other names, we may have missed. Not covered yet, um, and then we'll go through um, the answers. Okay, we've got Tamapuata, I Ngati Kahumanu, thank you. Any other answers? No? Well, Kapai, I, I think, um, Helen, let's pull up the, the next slide. Yes, Ngati Parau is another 
named Iwi in the original claim. So if we click onto the next slide and then um, uh, hit the, the button for the first uh, name, so Hana Mari, Ai, Ngati Kuri, Te Tai Te Kuro. Um, uh, hit the button again for the next uh, name claimant. Himanui Atafaki Witana, or uh, more famously known as Del Wihungi from Te Rarua, Tai Te Kuro. Uh, Helen, the next um, bullet point. John Hippolyte, Ngati Kuata, Te Tauihu, uh, the top of the South Island. Kia ora, thank you. Uh, the next bullet point. Tamapoata. Um, yes, Tafano or Rua Taupare, Ngati Paro. Uh, the next bullet point, please. If we could have the next um, bullet point. Ah, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Kataraina Rimini Ngati Kahumanu. So, what really resonated with me uh, was uh, the report produced by Moana Jackson, and you have the link there, um, that describes Hanamari, Sanamari to others as unshakable champions uh, for this claim. And so, when we do look at these grievances that are set out in treaty claims, they're normally driven by very special people within Te Ao Māori. And these six claimants really were the po, the champions uh, in the late 80s and early 90s who recognised uh, the issues, the policies and laws that impact on Māori as a significant treaty issue. So yeah, thank you everyone. There's a chocolate fish going your way. It may be an e-chocolate fish, so it may not be too appetising. <laughs> Thank you, Helen. Can we could have the next slide, please? So, if we get a sense then that um, Māori drove this um, grievance uh, to be put in front of the Crown, and that it's taken a journey of over 29 years uh, to uh, get that claim through the tribunal process. And that went back 23 years since the, uh, the inquiry started and then 13 years when the report was produced, but it's been nine years since that report was produced and the Crown um, has been um, organising itself uh, to respond uh, to the findings and the recommendations made by the Tribunal. So it's a really interesting time frame uh, that for us as, as people who work in the sector, um, to be mindful of that when we do sit down with Māori, particularly those of us who are part of the crowd, um, excluding you um, who are part of the regions and are part of local government and, and library institutions. But for us, um, say for example, with the National Library and Archives New Zealand, this really resonates with us. Okay, Helen, if we could have the next slide, please. So um, putting this in a, in a policy um, speak or policy language, so uh, for claimants, Tonga encompassed all of the elements of a tribal group's estate, the material and non-material, the tangible and intangible. And they argued, so Helen, if we could have the first bullet point. So they argued that the decision-making authority over the conservation, control of, and proprietal interests in natural resources, including indigenous flora and fauna, he kaupapa o rato katoa o ngā taonga tukuihu. I'll come back to that shortly. The second bullet point, um, Helen, if you please, thank you. Uh, the right to determine the indigenous culture and customary heritage rights and the knowledge and use of indigenous flora and fauna uh, the next bullet point, thank you, Helen. And um, it relates to the right to protect, enhance, and transmit the cultural and spiritual knowledge and concepts found iorato katoa or taonga tukuihu. So this was the legal argument that was put forward by the claimants, and I think. 
not many people um, are exposed to the actual intricacies of the arguments put forward um, by the claimants. Because it's really useful to understand that the tribunal process itself is a legal process. It's, you know, led by judges of the Māori Land Court. They are presiding officers over inquiries held by the tribunal. And claimants are represented by uh, lawyers, by their legal counsel. The Crown is represented by the Crown Law Office. So that gives um, a bit of um, an insight into how the tribunal goes about in making inquiries into claims made by Māori. And I must say, they are robust, they are thorough, and very much adversarial processes. Okay, uh, well, thank you. Um, Helen, I wonder if we can go on to the next slide, please. So what I thought would be really useful now is to extract a key statement from the tribunal in regards to the findings that they made in regards to Y262. So as a result of the historical treaty settlements and the post-settlement economic revival, along with Māori demographic growth and social change, Aotearoa New Zealand sits poised at a precipice, a crossroads, both in race relations and our long quest for a mature sense of our natural, of our national identity. So for me, um, and the experience I have in treaty settlements, um, it goes back to um, probably the 90s, uh, where I first started this mahi. Uh, then formally, uh, when I became a senior official at the Office of Treaty Settlements, but also very privileged uh, to be a negotiator and a researcher, specialist advisor uh, for my own iwi in, in treaty settlements uh, and negotiation. So this statement really is a, a, a window into the view of the tribunal and what this process really means uh, for us as, as a country and our national identity. So I think that's a really important message to, to put across. Um, Helen, can we have the next slide, please? All right. Now, in your breakout rooms, this is another breakout session. Ko Aotearoa tēnei, um, in its uh, report, how many chapters or what were the eight areas uh, that were covered by Ko Aotearoa tēnei, the report? So in your breakout rooms, if you could have a look and, and just amongst yourselves, uh, come up with um, eight subject areas, policy areas that you think or know uh, was covered in the tribunal's report. To take my mute off this time, so that's, uh, that's good. <laughs> so in your um, breakout rooms, you would have discussed, uh, you know, what were the likely or you were aware of the eight uh, chapters and subject areas that were covered by um, uh, the report by the tribunal, Kaltero Tene. So, um, in your chats, um, if we could have some responses um, through now, um, then we can have a look at um, the next slide. Helen, I was wondering if we could pull up that um, slide again. Yeah. Perfect. Now, this is actually quite a difficult um, question to, to answer. Um, for me, I've read the report about two times. Um, and it took me um, quite a long time to do. Uh, so I, I certainly understand that um, the complexities uh, that the report covered, um, so diverse and dynamic, because the report did inquire into 20 government agencies and the legislation and policy that relates to them. So really, that type of deep dive um, is one of the reasons this is such an important seminal report. So Helen, if we could click on the first button and um, have a look at, uh, yeah. So Tonga Works and Intellectual Property. We just had a quick discussion in the breakout group I was in around the work that uh, MB is currently doing uh, its, its review of the Copyright Act. So within that um, piece of uh, legislation is uh, the rules. 
um, in regards to intellectual property. But what we do know about uh, intellectual, intellectual property law and legislation is that it's a Western model um, that's based on the original creator being an individual and that um, it doesn't quite fit within a, an indigenous framework or a Maori framework where intellectual property um, comes from the collective. And that's one of the challenges that MB uh, will be facing uh, when they uh, review the act, whether that's uh, put into a bill, which I think is, is highly likely. And um, that process is, is currently underway. I'm feeding into that um, uh, for the department. Okay, Helen, if we could have the next bullet point, please. Genetic and biological resources uh, and time of species. Now, this is such a really important issue. We know that uh, big companies, international conglomerates uh, are testing um, DNA native species flora and fauna for potential commercial use. Uh, it's been an ongoing issue, and, and of course we, we do know about that. Uh, the second bullet point, thank you. Oh, third bullet point, Helen, thank you. The relationship with the environment, te taia. Uh, so that's another area that's um, very close to te ao Māori, we know that. Um, and that relationship between Māori and the environment uh, is another big issue. Uh, so that relates to the RMA and the work that the Ministry for the Environment is leading. Okay, the next one, please. Taonga and the conservation estate. So we do know that um, the national parks and the national uh, landscape uh, that um, DOC uh, is uh, looking after has significant Taonga for Māori. And so um, that was raised as a key issue for um, Y262. Uh, the next bullet point, thank you. Te Reo Māori. So Te Reo Māori uh, being a fundamental um, cornerstone of Māori culture uh, was uh, the other area that was inquired into by the tribunal. Uh, the next bullet point, thank you, uh, Helen. So this is one chapter that really resonates with us who work in the, the knowledge sector. Um, so when we look after Mātauranga Māori publications, unpublished uh, material and records of the Crown and collections, we know that in that material, significant uh, Mātauranga Māori is, is held. Okay, uh, moving on to the next uh, bullet point, Rongoa Māori. Um, another big area that uh, Māori inquired into. And uh, within that knowledge uh, system for Rua Māori is uh, quite significant sacred knowledge. Uh, and the next one, uh, thank you, Helen. International instruments. So we know that agreements such as TPPA uh, was a catalyst for how treaty interests were being addressed um, with international uh, agreements uh, between government and other uh, governments and states, uh, particularly with TPPA across the Pacific. So we know that that's been a, a key issue for, for Māori. So within this, uh, who can tell me what is the, the first area within this list that Māori, uh, uh, that the Crown is starting to respond to Māori uh, about? Um, while the slide has been um, a brought back, one of the key strategies that the, the government has undertaken in recent years um, has been, have there been any chat responses so far? Or if you, if you know the answer, just unmute and, and let us know. Right, now, I know some of you probably already know the answer, but just not quite clear. Oh, natural resources is one, I think so. Um, DIA is actually establishing a new regulatory body called Tomata Arawai. And that's in response to uh, the event that happened in uh, Havelock North and the water quality issue. 
over a million, like close to a million New Zealanders live in the areas where um, their water quality isn't regulated at all. So we've set up a body to, to address that significant issue for Māori, but that's not one of them. <laughs> one of the um, seminal pieces of work, I'm, and I've been involved with, it's so exciting, um, and is the first step to respond to Y262, and that is the Mahi Corona strategy to revitalise Te Reo Māori. So we know that uh, one of the chapters in Y262 uh, report for the tribunal is about Te Reo Māori, and Y262 and, Y262 and Mahi Corona are one of the first steps to um, address the aspirations and the concerns regarding the revitalization of Te Reo Māori. And that's a fantastic strategy. All right, so um, moving on to the next slide. Yeah, this particular uh, statement um, from the tribunal relates to Mataranga Māori, and I thought this would be really poignant for us who work in the sector. Um, and here it is. So Mataranga Māori is living art, or well, in living art and culture is not only a taonga, uh, but also a fundamental, but also fundamental to our collective national identity. We reiterate that its survival and transmission depends on the contributions of both Māori and the Crown. So in that statement from the tribunal, um, the way I've interpreted it is um, one of the key principles that we operate by, and, and no doubt, uh, your institutions uh, are looking at or have ad adopted and embraced, and that's the principle around partnership. So within this um, statement, it talks about uh, en enabling the transmission of Mātauranga Māori um, will depend on both Māori and the Crown contributing to this uh, space. Uh, and we know um, for us uh, at this side of the Crown, or who are Crown officials, uh, as treaty partners, we need, we need to turn our thinking to um, how do we enable uh, the contribution, the collaboration, the relationship, the partnership, uh, what does that look like? And so that will be part of our response. That's where some of the thinking we need to start contributing to. Now, <clears throat> uh, on the next slide um, is some recommendations uh, from the tribunal. This is in regards to uh, Archives New Zealand and the National Library. So I thought this is really useful, particularly for us uh, and our uh, branch within um, the department, DIA, and we will work closely with Martin and Amari. Okay, so here is uh, uh, two uh, recommendations. And that is to manage the use of Mataranga Māori and Archives New Zealand and the National Library through the same objection-based approach um, the Tribunal described in Section 1.7.1. Uh, access to these repositories to private research purposes would remain free and open as it would for research relating to treaty claims and other legal proceedings. However, where users plan to exploit Mataranga Māori or commercial gain, they would need to either consult with kaitiaki or seek kaitiaki consent as appropriate before doing so. Kaitiaki would be able to bring any objections to the commission that they, the tribunal, have recommended. So one of the recommendations that the tribunal has made, particularly for our sector, access, use and reuse of Mataranga Māori is the threat of misappropriation and misuse of Mataranga Māori, Māori knowledge, concepts, designs, language um, for commercial uh, opportunities. And we know during COVID-19, there was actually a spike in international companies misappropriating uh, Mataranga Māori. So I'm not too sure if you noticed that. It's an ongoing issue, it's not new. Um, is it a matter for Y262? And the answer is yes. Um, and then the next stage, which my workshops number two and number three look at, uh, will be deep diving into 
what do our institutions do and how do we organize ourselves to respond okay um just moving on to the next slide and i'm also mindful of time is uh, the crown response to y262 so what does that look like <coughs> So in 2018, um, Minister Mahuta uh, provided Parliament with its annual report, Section 8I report is what it's called. Section 8I is a section within uh, the Treaty of Waitangi Act uh, 1975 and its amendment in 1985, which requires the Crown to respond to Parliament about how it's responding to the findings and recommendations of the tribunal. So in its report of 2018, uh, Minister Mahuta started to indicate to her colleagues in cabinet that she will start inquiring and developing uh, a process to look at Y262 and the tribunal's report. So if we can move to our, yeah, our next slide. Thank you, Helen. Um, we're getting better at this. So Tapuni Kaukini um, has been leading this phase um, to respond on behalf of the Crown to Y262. So Tapuni Kaukini has framed an architecture, a framework for a whole of government approach to um, respond to Y262. Putting that in a bit of context from a government perspective, this has never been done before. <laughs> so um, asking government agencies and their silos to, to work together is a new thing. Um, cabinet under uh, this current Labour government um, agreed a cabinet around uh, government agencies working closer together. That's been a feature uh, under this current government. Uh, Mahi Corona is one of those um, pieces of work. Uh, that has an all the government approach. Y262 is, is the other. So, <clears> to <throat> Puni Kōkiri and its architecture for an all the government or whole of government approach is seeking to make uh, immediate progress on existing issues and work streams that connect to Y262, to utilize the guidance of the tribunal as a foundation for consideration regarding these issues, and then to facilitate, facilitate a high-level conversation between Māori and the Ministerial Oversight Group um, in regards to how do we coordinate ourselves um, to start having a conversation around Y262. Um, so if we could have a look quickly at the, the next uh, slide, and this is for the purpose of uh, my team or uh, my branch here at um, the Department of Internal Affairs, which is made up of the National Library and Archives. So um, in that architecture, the Minister for Internal Affairs currently, and before the elections is Tracy Martin. She sits on um, one of the ministerial groups and then sitting above them is an oversight group made up of Jacinda Grant Robertson, uh, and other key portfolio holders um, that uh, have uh, ministries and departments that are working on uh, the areas outlined in the Y262 report. Um, so which Kite focus groups? Underneath um, this minister framework and their groups is uh, three focus groups made up of officials. And so for us uh, at the department, we are in the first two groups, and I'll share um, a document shortly that catches that. And so, um, ultimately, um, what are our policy programs that align with the Kitty focus groups? So the Crown has divided itself up into three areas. Um, the first one is Taonga Works and Mataranga Māori. Second group is Taonga Species and Mataranga Māori. And the third group it, uh, uh, relates to international instruments and Mataranga Māori. So there's a theme coming through here um, that you've picked up on 
and, and we'll come to that before we wrap up shortly. Okay, if we could have a look at the next slide. One of the things I, I thought would be useful to let you know about this term, the, the name of um, Te Pai Tafiti, uh, because it captures uh, in the name the long-term approach that the Crown is taking to respond to Y262. We've had a bit of a, uh, an insight, we've scratched the surface around the complexities and um, well, that make up uh, Y262, the range of agencies, the range of legislation and policy, the responses that the Crown is undertaking to address the matters of Y262. So just in this description, Minister Mahuta describes the work um, as follows. The Paitafiti, the distant horizon, reflects the breadth of the kaupapa across government, its connection to communities and its reach into the future to unlock the economic, social and cultural potential of Te Ao Māori. Now that really resonates with me. That is an exciting statement around the role that addressing the issues in Y262 can contribute to the economic, social and cultural revitalization of Te Ao Māori. So if we have a look at the next slide, which I think I might pass, but this is just a bit of an insight into the Department of Internal Affairs and how we're feeding into the order of government strategy. Maybe not so useful for um, some of the Lienza uh, members, but an insight into um, the faces to the people, such as myself and others, who are involved in this process. Okay, now we're coming to the last slide, and um, at the end of the slide, we'll have time for uh, a Q and A session before we wrap up. So, um, uh, Minister Mahuta, uh, frame Y262 in 2019 and 2020 as follows. So Y262 fundamentally is a claim about how the future should look, noting that addressing Y262 can help shift our view of the treaty from that of a breach contract or grievance mode, uh, which can be repaired in the moment, to that of an exchange of a solemn promise or solemn promises about our ongoing relationships uh, for the future. So for me, I think that's the pathway uh, that Y262 is, is looking to uh, travel and traverse. Uh, and it's a, a comment and a statement I wanted to, to wrap up um, today's presentation. So in general, um, as a reminder, uh, this introduction, this first workshop is an introduction to Y262. Um, the second workshop I've designed is around a further deep dive into what the tribunal said in relation to Archives New Zealand and the National Library. And then the third workshop looks at um, putting together key staff from across the branch around you know, what are we doing in terms of responding to Y262 and what could we be doing and what planning do we need to do to address some of the more substantial matters that have been raised uh, by claimants and uh, Y262. So, nā reira, uh, ko te tūmanako o tēnei wāhanga kia whakaki tō kui te mātauranga i pāna ki Y262. So today, uh, the hope was that um, we'll be able to provide you with more information, more knowledge that you can fill your kite, uh, your kite mātauranga in regards to Y262. And um, it's designed particularly for uh, a set of three workshops that uh, will take you through the legacy of Y262. Um, what we're currently doing uh, in regards to our institutions and then what we could be doing in the future to organize ourselves to respond um, to Māori and Y262. So I'm open to take any chats now. Hopefully um, that's working. And uh, thank you for your time today. Tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou. Kia ora mai tātou katoa.
Uh, kia ora, Trevor. Kia ora. Uh, ko Marisa tēnei, uh, e mahi ana o uh, ki te pātaka kōrero o te Henninga Waka. Oh, kia ora. Kia ora. Uh, he pātai tāku. Um, how many of the original claimants are alive, still alive? And do you, do you have a sense of... Uh, you know, if I was them, I would be very disappointed, bitterly disappointed at the length of time yes. it's taken for this claim to be resolved. Do you think they realised when they lodged the claim right. they expect it was going to be such a drawn-out process? Oh, uh, you know, that's a fantastic question because we do know that, um, uh, firstly, into the first part of your party. Um, all the original uh, claimants have passed. And right. so uh, none of them are, are alive, but uh, their descendants, um, so uh, Hami Pitipi um, and others have uh, picked up the mantle. And, and so they carry that, um, that legacy uh, for their tūpuna and for their iwi uh, today mm. in 2020. Mm. Um, and, and in regards to the second part of your question, um, yes, um, is, is the answer Māori will be upset and, um, and, and I think it's, it's appropriate that they are uh, upset as well mm, Absolutely um, Yeah, it, it tells us the, the weight and yeah. the seriousness of this kaupapa um, and when I worked for um, the Office of Treaty Settlements um, I was part of a team that uh, was the first face of the Crown to meet uh, officially around their treaty agreements is that go right back to 1840. And, right. and so we encountered that. Um, and so for me as a Māori, uh, but also working for the Crown, it, um, it was appropriate. And, and it didn't bother me actually, because I thought, yeah, right, mm -hmm. this is um, uh, the, the grievance in, in, in its physical form. So, mm -hmm. uh, and they would tell us. And, and, but in, in that exchange, is um, a bridge for me um, and for us to build an enduring relationship into the future with Māori. Our role as um, representing the Crown or our institutions is to understand that legacy. So that's how we build a, a future relationship because both sides of the table know that story and our role, how we've contributed over time uh, to um, to the legacy that Māori uh, embraced, to so much to the extent that they named their marae after the grievance. So you'll go to some wow. regions where they uh, will hold on to their grievance for eternity. And, mm. um, but they will move on, uh, but they won't forget the story. And I think that, that's an mm. important uh, mm. part of the corner. Mm. Mm. Kia ora. Thank you. I'll oh, say hello to uh, Tom and the other guys. I, I do a bit of work there at uh, Auckland Museum. <laughs> Ina rawa asikoe, Trevor. Um, that was fantastic. Uh, it sounds like I'm not sure whether anyone's got any other questions, but I just thought I would um, say a huge thank you to you for your time and your knowledge. Um, and I'd wanted to apologize to everyone for the weird um, technical glitches that we had with the chat and then my PowerPoint crashing. <laughs> um, but I want to let you know that the um, recording of this will be made available early next week and um, Trevor's handout will also be sent out to everyone who registered. And perhaps we could also supply the slides since um, there was some, some weird glitches. Um, Absolutely, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. And um, maybe Trevor might want to finish on a karakia. Absolutely. Um, oh, tenako e te tui hine hoi no, tenā tātou ka toa. Uh, ko tai mai ki te mutanga o uh, tēnei wānanga e pāna uh, ki Y262. Nā reira, tēnā koutou. Uh, tēnā koutou tūrua hiranga o Aotearoa. Tēnā koutou ka toa. A uh, mīnoi tātou. A whakataka ta hau ki te uru, a whakataka ta hau ki te tonga. Kia mā kina kina kūta, kia mā tara tara ki tai. Ehi ake yana te atakura. He tio, he huka, he hau hau, hau mea, hui e, 
Tai kia. Kia ora. Kia ora.